So our final candidate is the, our other candidate for our sheriff this evening, Mr. Paul Watkins. Paul. I appreciate the time. I was born, raised, and educated here in Tiger County. I received a commission as an infantry officer in the Army Reserves here in Tiger County. I have invested in real estate and businesses here in Tiger County. I have donated to charities and family and the community here in Tiger County. This is my home, and I think we can do better. Over the course of my career, I have managed people and projects across the U.S. and in 48 countries on five continents. I've managed improvements in IT processes, management processes, professional development, and customer service around the globe. During the past 10 years, I've created more than 100 jobs and generated in excess of $2 million in taxes. To me, improving our processes is second nature. To me, a professional, properly trained, friendly, customer service oriented staff is mandatory. It is expected. I owned a successful trucking company and have never driven a tractor trailer. I owned a successful air cargo and logistics man management firm and have never flown a cargo plane. I am currently developing a marina and concessions business on Count Esky Lake and I have never before owned such an enterprise. Through a lifetime of successful business, business experiences, I have learned that proper management means proper delegation. A successful mission requires successful leadership. If elected, I will manage the Sheriff's Office the same way any successful enterprise is managed, through total quality management. Every employee and every, and every voter will be involved with the decision-making process. 30 seconds, Paul. Every trained expert in the Sheriff's Office will continue with their valuable work, but that expertise and their input will be incorporated into the overall mission, goals, plans, efficiencies, and vision of the office. If elected, I will advocate for the highest levels of professionalism and customer service throughout the courthouse. Deputies will do the work of deputies. The administrative staff will do the work of the administrative staff. And as your sheriff, I will set about the work of building an auxiliary force to aid in the support of our local municipalities based on a program outlined in the AmeriCorps Act called Volunteers and Police Service. Is that it? Yep. Do we have any questions? yourself personally, how you would handle a serving a warrant in a rural section of Taylor County to a bail jumper, and then what you would do from the time you get out of your squad car until you get back into that squad car with that handcuff. I'd explain to you what, what procedure you would use. Mr. Watkins, just a second. That would probably take more than 30 seconds, so before we do that, are there any other people who would like to ask Mr. Watkins? Thank you, sir. We don't know, just a second. I want to see how many, because I would like to make sure that Mr. Watkins gets a fair amount of time to answer this question. So, Will, why don't we give him a minute of his three minutes to answer this question, because we have two others, and that would still be a second one. Okay, it won't take that long. I, uh, my vision for the sheriff's office isn't like what it is now. I wouldn't be involved with that. You wouldn't be involved with that sheriff. I wouldn't be involved. You would send your deputies out to do that, but you would not be able to take it. Of course, with your back background, I can understand. Thank you. You answered my question. That was great. Your question is deep. Are there any other questions? For Sheriff Watkins. Hi, sir. My name is Ryan Fish. I work at the prison. And the sheriff has a great detail on uh, prison board meetings. Do you know anything about the prison system? I've never been to a prison board meeting. I've never worked for the government. My question is, is when our prison board goes and say one of our CEOs gets in trouble where we work at, our warden, the commissioners, and the sheriff sits on that. And the prison board's pretty big for us. That's why I'm wondering what your aspect is on the prison. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. You, when we're in a meeting, you would make a final decision on one of our CEOs. I'm asking you, do you know anything about the prison system? No, I don't. Okay, thank you. Yes, Eric. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Watkins, <coughs> I'm sure you're a good man and, and your heart for it should be. I'm the one individual in the room that served 18 years on the three sheriffs. Each one paying for having 
law enforcement as a backdrop. That constitutes the ability to apply the law, to direct the personnel to whom they are responsible to, and to the county at large. And to your question, ma'am, there's a reason why the sheriffs do not have jurisdiction. To come to credit, he has brought that message to us on multiple occasions. So respectfully, it's based on what we're talking about right this minute. It's when individuals are elected to the position without the understanding of the backdrop and the benefit of understanding how to apply the law that the liability falls back upon the county. And we are not prepared to put the county at risk under that particular circumstance when we don't have the absolute basic understanding. I've listened to some of the promotion that what we would like to achieve. We have run a balanced budget for a number of years. I'm sorry for the longevity of this, but my point, and I'll get to it very quickly. My point is the Board of Commissioners has held the line with no tax increase for several years, and we intend to continue to do that. But they still have the role of the deputies to do the job. The sheriff needs to manage that, and I, for one, will not vote to raise the budget given some of the proposals that are coming. So with not understanding the position, how do you propose to balance the budget based on what you're promoting as far as developing law enforcement out in the community now that you know some of the background? I understand what you're saying, and I appreciate that. The plan I've had, and you can look it up, it's Volunteers in Police Service. It's a police volunteers dialogue, and it's a volunteer program, and that's what I wanted to pursue. I don't know the intricacies of the budget at the courthouse and how the process works. I only know that these are my ideas, and I develop them as I go around and I meet people around the county, and there's a lot of people that support my thoughts and these ideas, and I'm presenting them in this forum, and if you like them, you don't like them, I get it. Thank you. As I said, I'm sure you're a good man. I appreciate the offer to seek the office. It certainly will benefit those you serve to have an understanding of the law. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Mack, do you have a question? Yes. I'm with Chrissy Griffin. I currently work at the Sheriff's Office. My question is on the volunteers or the volunteer deputies under the program, do you know that it takes 19 weeks of training that they have to go away for in order to be a deputy? So if you're going to have volunteer deputies, number one, are they going to wear a gun, and what kind of training are they going to have? Because I know our deputies have to have at least that 19-week training before they can go out on the road. I understand that, and I appreciate that. In my vision of the program, and if you study it, which is very interesting, the program recruits retired law enforcement and underutilized local law enforcement, and they're not only law enforcement. I mean, they recruit teachers and accountants, and it's a volunteer program to go out in the community and just do a little bit more, and I think we can always do just a little bit more. Yes, sir. John Ferguson, Blossburg. In the other enterprises you have been involved with, the many businesses and what have you that you've been successful at, did you know all about those businesses before you got involved with them? To be honest with you all, I don't know anything before I start it. I start, and I learn, and I talk to people, and I meet people. I talk to the corrections officers and the deputies, and I get their input. There's just two different visions here, and mine's not any better or any worse than Sheriff Young. They're just different, and I go out and I meet people, and I present them to the public, and that's what I'm trying to do. Mr. Watkins, you put a lot of emphasis on our Second Amendment rights in your campaign, on your commercials and on Facebook. With Congress voting down the bill, so no imminent threat being there against our Second Amendment rights, and let's say there was, though, as sheriff, what would you be able to do if federal law and state law had infringed upon our Second Amendment rights? What could you do to protect us without undermining state and federal law? I think what I'm talking about when we talk about defending our rights 
and more of the, the, the different the different role of the sheriff that I see than what Sheriff Young is, is pursuing now is I see more of a community advocate and a community leader and a community voice to, to when we talked about uh, when we talked about generating uh, votes and comments to, to our to our state legislature, I see more involvement in that sort of thing for me as a sheriff. And when I see an infringement on rights, I would I would be vocal and loud about it via the social media, via you know community visits and home visits and business visits. Um, I'd have to have a specific to tell you exactly what I do in that specific instance. Thank you. How much time do we have left? Um, well, we've we'll used a minute 41 and 45 seconds. We have some time for more questions. I would Thank you. Yeah. And then maybe just talking about right now, I know that the current administration is anti-gun, even though they say they're not. 